So hi Stephanie, thank you for joining us today on the CIPR Tourism and Hospitality Meeting. Um, just to give everybody an introduction, Stephanie specialises in social media support and influencer marketing and has particular expertise and experience in the travel and tourism sectors, working with clients such as Riyad Elegancia in Marrakesh, Kimani Luxury Clamping in the UK, Cox and King's Luxury Tours and Taylor Mayers Holidays, and the tour operator Tauk. Have I said that correctly? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and she's here today just to talk us through and share some of her expertise with the group about working with influencers, and there will be an opportunity for discussion and Q&A at the end. So, Steph, let's get started by looking at the value of working with influencers. What what is the value of working with influencers, particularly for PR people working in these sectors in tourism and hospitality? Sure. So people obviously love dreaming about holidays and restaurants and that sort of thing. And, and so and basically finding inspiration for that on social media. I think so many people do that. I know I personally do. And I see that happening every day uh, with regards to my clients. So um, and that particularly on Instagram and TikTok. TikTok's becoming really huge. Well, it is huge. Um, and so, and because this industry translates so well on social media, you know, it's very visually appealing. Um, it's, you know, I just think it's such a promotional opportunity for brands within this sector. Now, and if you work with the right type of, type of influencer, and so one that has, in my opinion, a strong community of followers um, and a great engagement on all of their content, then they can create kind of like amazing attention grabbing promotional content about your holidays, your restaurant or your, you know, whatever your offering is. Um, and then that should hopefully, you know, raise your profile and, and generate sales as well. And so, yeah, I think it's a massive opportunity with, with influencers and social media. It is an area I think that PR practitioners in particular feel still feel a bit unsure of. I think not everybody does it, not everybody includes it in their strategy. Um, why do you think that is? It's definitely, the, yeah, the def I've noticed a lot of um, kind of apprehension <laughs> from many of my clients actually. Um, and so, and I do understand certainty because I think it's a step away from the kind of traditional press trip model, for example. So if you're a, um, a tourism travel client, um, it, it's different from that kind of traditional press trip where you organize for the journalist to go and then they write about it and it's published. Um, but, you know, whereas in the past, you know, small mention of your travel company in a national newspaper that might drive leads, sales. Um, now, I truly believe that you can get more value from, from hosting uh, the right type of influencer or content creator, as I like to think of them as. Um, yeah, so, so as I say, I think it's that shift from that traditional kind of press trip model or, or press review model. But actually, it's really similar. It's, it's, it's my background's PR. And honestly, it's, it's, it's not that different when it comes to setting up these influencer trips. So I would definitely say don't you know, don't worry, it's, 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 not, it's not that difficult and not to worry. Yeah. I think one area that, that we as an agency particularly come across is, is budget for influencers and how much people need. Do, would you say that organisations need to have a budget set aside for working with influencers? So it, it can really vary. I think it depends what you're offering and what's great about this industry is usually it's, it's you know, it's something cool. So say it's a holiday, for example. Um, that influencer, you know, it probably has a great interest in that and, and, and wants to experience that. And so sometimes payment isn't involved. But I think for me, what's important with influencers is that it's not just sort of a, you know, it's not just a huge influencer who's going to basically do like a hashtag ad on content. And, and that's it. Uh, to me, that's quite lazy and doesn't necessarily bring great results. And that sort of person can charge thousands. What I think is important is that you work with somebody who can cre create really great content, not just for them to share on their channels, but also for you to use on your own channels. And so just recently with, with for example, with Riyadh Elegancia, which is a, a traditional um, Moroccan hotel, um, it's in Marrakesh, they, they very much tend to work with um, 
content creators. So they're, they're photographers basically, and they're great with video too. And they understand how Instagram works and so how, you know, how important it is to have, to share a series of reels, for example, you know, Instagram's become very video orientated now and it's, it's going to focus on video. And so that's actually what I would look for is kind of working with content creators who have a great following uh, rather than potentially spending, who will usually charge a day rate um, between 300 and 500 pounds um, rather than spending literally thousands on a huge, huge kind of, you know, celeb influencer. Yeah. Um, but but as I say, you don't often need you don't often need a budget because if you're giving them something they really want, yeah, something of value, and it's yeah. worth a lot, then then you know you you might not have to. Um, and I know there's a lot of examples with my clients where they've not they've not paid anything. Um, but I think it's just being aware of what you're getting in return for for them enjoying that free experience. And kind of making sure both sides are happy. Never, ever, ever assume that an influencer will work for free because that is when, because you've got to remember they're not being paid. So like a traditional journalist would. And so never have that assumption because I think that's that's when we've had incidences of some influencers calling out brands for assuming they would work for free. So, yeah. <laughs> we've, we've seen some examples of it the opposite way, haven't we, as well with, with brands and for example hotels calling out influencers sometimes and that perception of I, I know I get a lot of emails saying can I have a free stay for mm -hmm. my boyfriend's sister's mum's birthday that kind of thing yeah. um, what are your thoughts on that so that definitely happens and actually I think that may, might link back to the sort of cynicism people have about influencers um I see it all the time too and I'd say a lot of those are actually you know, I might thank them for getting in touch, but it doesn't add up to anything. Usually the best partnerships are where I found somebody to, to do it. And it's, yeah, it's a partnership and it's not somebody just wanting a freebie. Um, and so my advice would be to go back to what I said earlier about, um, you know, being selective and finding the right type of influencer and to not fall for some of these, you know, that, yeah, basically there's a lot of people asking for free things um when you're looking at whether you want to work with an influencer look at their engagement on their content so as in how many people are commenting does it seem genuine um if they've got a really strong great following you might you know you might wish to work with them if you're familiar with them but often as i say it's when you've actually approached people yourself who you admire and you like their work and you know that take, takes a bit of time in the sense of you know following people and understanding who you might want to work with and just taking your time but yeah absolutely absolutely um being proactive rather than just reacting to what comes into your inbox I guess yeah absolutely and I think I think if you as a, once you do agree to sort of partner and work work with an influencer or content creator I highly recommend sort of drafting a simple I, I always draft sort of a simple agreement that highlights exactly what both sides are getting from the agreement. And so it will include, like, for example, say, you know, say the hotel, uh, you know, two nights stay, including, you know, any, any dinners, et cetera, experiences. Yeah. And then, um, you know, in return for that, how many, how many grid posts will the influencer share on Instagram? How many stories will they share? Um, and that's something you can discuss, right? I think, I think if it's, you know, if you're not paying, uh, the client sorry the influencer then um you could just say to them look in return for this experience you know what can you offer us in terms of in terms of the amount of content and how much would you how, how often would you post then you might be happy with what they say and then you know that would be the the terms of the agreement but having that agreement in, pay, in place is super important because I think you can then go back to it and you know it includes things like you'll you know they'll tag your you'll, they'll tag your business in in the post they they will link to your website perhaps in a story. Uh, that's really important to have that 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 kind of you know set in writing. Yeah. Um, and it, it doesn't take that? long. It's a very simple thing. I've got an example of an agreement. If you know, if anybody wants to get in touch and see it, if that helps, yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> I think I think that's a problem. People quite often don't know where to start, do they? Particularly because they've never done it before. So you'd say kind of scout out the right influences for your brand and then get those agreements in place. Absolutely, yes. Um, 
yeah even even if i mean especially if payment is involved there needs to be an agreement but you know even if there's no, if the payment isn't involved um especially if you're a small business that's obviously a cost to you whatever you're offering and so i think it's it's only fair on both sides that you know you know what's what you're both going to be providing and getting from it and um, so when it comes to measurement then so you've, you've worked with your influencer they've come and they visited your hotel or your attraction um how how do you measure that kind of return on investment even if it's not been monetary if it's been a free stay or a free meal or that kind of thing sure so um i think there's very there's various things you can do for example you can ask the influencer to provide stats after they've shared all of the content which will be within for example in their instagram insights so or instagram analytics and so they can they can provide things like how many impressions uh, each post received uh, the reach of each post etc likes that kind of thing um and then you can also look at your own insights so you know look at how your your own instagram channel how, uh, how did that perform during the time when that content was shared by the influencer did you see an increase in profile visits did you see an increase in followers uh, could you look at your google analytics and, and see if there were you know how many clicks came from that in that Insta influencers instagram page and so actually there's a lot of insights that you can look at um, more so than pr i actually think in terms of trying to kind of track sales from activity um, and kind of to get more clear stats of how well it's worked but that's something you can ask the influencer and you could include that actually in your agreement that you know after after the activity they'll they'll provide screen shots of of all the stats it's really easy to do yeah so in your experience then can you share any successes any horror stories from your experience of working with influencers um i mean i'm definitely seeing successes with my uh, marrakesh riyadh client um just in terms of of just the fantastic content that that some of these content creators, uh, you know, their photographers have been creating for the for the Riyadh and actually giving them access to all of the the raw footage and files. That's really important. In fact, I would I would ask for that in the agreement as well that you have access for the for the content on your own channels. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm not physically there at the in Marrakesh, unfortunately. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> so I'm desperate to visit, but um, I can't go there and take my own content all of the time. So I do need content as a social media manager, and so that's another thing. Like working with these influencers is a really great way to to just have ongoing content that you can use on your own channels. So so yes, definitely seeing success stories. Uh, in terms of that and and whenever I share that kind of content it always performs much better I mean video is huge now as I said earlier and so it's really helpful to have video um I'm just thinking about a baby brand that I worked with it was a um a baby product and um I worked with a lot of mummy influencers and um I worked with this I forget her name but she's got triplets and she's got a toddler and she was what I would think of as like a micro influencer, someone who just has a really strong growing community, but she's not quite like, you know, Stacey Solomon, you know, just yeah. who yeah. massive. Um, and so we, we, I think we worked with her at the right time. She just charged, a, you know, a couple of hundred pounds to share a few grid posts and stories. And um, the results were amazing. I remember the client said, Oh, we had so many clicks on the website and this is like the best performing influencer content that we've seen and you know compared to some of the other influencers that we'd worked with that charge thousands uh the bigger ones uh you know we got much better results from the smaller ones and so that's something to keep in mind too it's it, you don't have to spend like thousands and thousands in fact i would i wouldn't personally unless you've got money to burn um horror, <laughs> horror stories the only one I could think of, and I'm obviously not going to mention any names, but um, I, this was back in the day when they weren't influencers, they were bloggers. And um, I really loved a client. It was a tourist board client. And um, 
so I had to organize like a group press trip for these bloggers and the majority of them are really great um it was, a, it was an amazing trip there's so much included so much covered but three of these bloggers were clearly there because they just wanted like to take advantage and have as many freebies as possible yeah. and um yeah just during you know one one evening we had a really like you know paid for dinner and there's was, there's was lots of alcohol included it was like perfect and then every you know everybody went to bed apart from these three bloggers who stayed up and they they basically charged a huge huge um bar bill to the to the hotel that we were staying at and then they just didn't pay it and so <laughs> once we got back the tourist board got in touch and we're you know they said they raised this issue and um we were just really shocked and disappointed we'd never ever with either with bloggers or or traditional journalists up until that point um and you know we never work with them with them again and um I think if you behave like that that's the thing like you're going to get not blacklisted but you just yeah. it's unbe professional. Be so yeah that was a real eye opener but I mean that was years and years ago and um since then like I've not had any issues so there's obviously been the odd time when I've, we've provided product to I've, I've, this baby product for example I'm thinking of um beauty products in the past we've provided to influencers and then you don't hear anything we go completely silent but that's a rare that's you know that's only happened occasionally as well I would say especially with that agreement there most people are fair and you know do what they've said they'll do but yeah okay <laughs> I know <laughs> Um, so just finally then, if you could summarise your top tips for people working in PR who are looking to work with influencers, what would you say they would be? Yeah, so I think just to remember, it's not that different from the kind of traditional PR approach. Um, you know, just go about it in a kind of organised way, I think. So I like to keep a record of, of all of our influencer partnerships when it comes to, uh, with each client. and then. Um, yeah, just, I would also recommend taking it to email. I really like to have an email chain of, of what's been agreed. Um, instead of just doing it via direct messages, you might initially get in touch via direct, direct messages on, on Instagram. But I, I would highly recommend taking it off there. And then you can start to, you know, agree what, what, what's going to be shared, what you're going to offer. And then you can send across the, the um, agreement via email. I think that's really helpful. And it, keep, it helps to keep it professional things can get a bit lost in direct messages and then um yeah and never ever assume that they'll work for free I think that's super important and then yeah I think I think that's it really and perhaps perhaps do focus more on content creators so people who just are usually they're photographers or are just really good at creating awesome social content more so perhaps over these celebrities that charge thousands that would that would be what I would recommend.